Hello there, old and new friends. Welcome to Divine Musing, episode 12, Changing My Clothes. I am Destiny Rambo Corey, and I am so thankful that you have joined me for this journey into scripture, literature, poetry, and prayer as we view them through the light of transformation and growth. Here's something I've been thinking about lately. We begin with a quote from Mark Lawrence. Memories are dangerous things. You turn them over and over until you know every touch and corner, but still you'll find an edge to cut you. Memories truly are dangerous. Our past, whether we like it or not, plays an integral role in who we are today. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the growth have all been tools that shape us into who we are. For some, that shaping has led to destruction and ruin and shame, and to others, those tools became lessons and teachings. We all have such interesting stories. You can't sit with someone for more than a few minutes without realizing that. Where we come from, who we were surrounded by, and those we've met along the way, all create a powerful narrative. The struggle we face today is how to embrace our story without it taking over. I hear the phrase, own your stuff, with the word stuff replaced by a more colorful S word that I won't be saying. <laughs> I hear it used a lot these days. Most of the time it's being said like a prison sentence that's unavoidable, like you did this, own it, carry the shame of it forever, no moving on. I've honestly never liked that expression. There's a difference in walking in your truth and allowing that truth to set you free versus taking on a cloak of your past that you're, never that you're never allowed to take off. I believe now more than ever that standing in your truth doesn't have to be as scary as we think it is. When I think about removing that cloak of the negative narrative of our lives, I'm reminded of the story of Jesus healing the blind man Bartimaeus in Mark 10, beginning at verse 46. Then they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd, a blind beggar Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road, as was his custom. When Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, Jesus, son of David, Messiah, have mercy on me. Many sternly rebuked him, telling him to keep still and be quiet, but he kept on shouting out all the more, Son of David, Messiah, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, telling him, Take courage, get up, he is calling for you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, my master, let me regain my sight. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith and confident trust in my power has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and began following Jesus on the road. The part of this miracle that always stands out to me is verse 50, where it says that he threw off his cloak before he came to see Jesus. In those times, beggars were made to wear certain cloaks that identified themselves as such. But when Bartimaeus jumped up to go see Jesus, he threw that cloak aside before he even talked to Jesus. He chose to let go of the thing that identified him by his past and his disability first. He had such faith that Jesus would heal him that he didn't even bring that cloak with him. That is the kind of faith I long to operate in. How many of us have the attention of Jesus and the knowledge that he can and will heal us and bring us out of our present circumstances, but we're afraid to let go of the cloak that defines us? Though it's a symbol of being an outcast, it can be comfortable. It can keep us warm at night and maybe even offer some stability. If we know we're broken and everybody else does too, there's definitely some comfort there even if that comfort is nothing more than well-dressed complacency. 
When I think about my past, there are so many things that I'm ashamed of. Things I've done, places I've been, people I've hurt forever, and punishments I've inflicted on myself that have left lasting scars. I have one of three options to be able to move forward in life. Option one is just complete denial. Pretending these things never happened and praying to God that no one finds out the truth. It is a terrifying way to live when you're constantly in fear of being exposed. The second option is rewriting history to erase those unsightly bits and attempt to change the narrative in such a way that the truth gets buried. It requires gaslighting myself and those around me so much that the new truth starts to outweigh the real truth. After time, those memories start to blur so much so that I can't remember what was real and what's the new story. Napoleon Bonaparte said that history is a set of lies agreed upon and that can become true quicker than we realize. The third option is just laying it all out there. Every ugly truth on display in such a way that it can never come back to bite me. If I put it all out there myself, no one can hit me with a gotcha down the road that will ruin my life. It's a way of owning my story without letting it define me. When everything is in the light, darkness has no place. It can try, and it will try, but it holds no weight. When Bartimaeus came to Jesus, he was still blind, but he made the choice to let go of what defined him as a blind beggar first. I believe that was the moment his healing began. In the same way, we have the opportunity to throw off those cloaks and step into healing. When I think about the cloak that I wore for so long, it's kind of like that episode of Friends where Joey puts on all of Chandler's clothes at once. You know, could I be wearing any more clothes? <laughs> um, yeah, for me, it wasn't just one thing to heal from and to take off. It is layer after layer. Another good analogy to that is like peeling an onion tiny little film after tiny little film. Um, we, what we deal with in life these days is rarely as simple as throwing off one cloak. But the beautiful thing is that Jesus is so patient with us that he will wait for us as long as it takes to pull those things off and follow him. Pretending those things didn't happen is like swallowing poison and letting it eat you alive from the inside. You can only suppress those memories for so long that the gnawing away will eventually cause an implosion. C.S. Lewis put it this way, I have learned now that while those who speak about one's miseries usually hurt, those who keep silence hurt more. Rewriting the story only leads to fear and confusion. It requires lie after lie after lie to yourself and to others until no one really knows who you are anymore, not even yourself. Laying it out there in a safe space with the ones you love and trust brings so much freedom. Before my husband Joel and I got married, we had several rough and pretty uncomfortable conversations. We decided as a couple that before we said yes to forever, we wanted to know the dark truths of each other in their entirety. That way, there were no surprises down the road. As hard as those conversations were, I am grateful every day to know that there is no shadow that could hurt us, no place of darkness where secrets can hide. I've had to have conversations like this as well with close friends and family members. Some of those conversations required me having to acknowledge the lies of the past and telling them that some of the stories that I had told them weren't true, that I had tried to rewrite history in a way that was beneficial or safe even for me. I encourage you, don't waste time living a lie. Owning your past doesn't have to mean being banished to remain in it. These conversations are vital, first with yourself than the ones that you love. They're painful moments for sure, but it brings such a sense of peace once the healing has begun. We can't heal until we're honest. We can't grow until we acknowledge where we have been and renounce it. Psalm 51 is one of the most beautiful examples of what that kind of acknowledgement looks like. Verse one through 11 says, 
Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and guilt and cleanse me from my sin. For I am conscious of my transgressions and I acknowledge them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified when you speak your sentence and faultless in your judgment. I was brought forth in a state of wickedness. In sin my mother conceived me, and from my beginning I too was sinful." Behold, you desire truth in the innermost being and in the hidden part of my heart, you will make me know wisdom. Purify me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness and be satisfied. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right and steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Jesus taught that the truth will set us free. He doesn't say it'll be easy, but I know from experience that the freedom of truth far outweighs the discomfort of speaking it and even more so outweighs the inner turmoil of suppressing it. If you are in a place of seeking truth in your own life, or if you're looking for the courage to let go of the cloak of shame, if you truly are ready to face your past, shine a light on it, and find freedom, then why don't we pray this prayer together? Divine Creator, you sent your Son Jesus to earth to show us the way, the way of truth, the way of life, the way of deliverance. Meet me in my frailties and give me the courage to speak my truth. Help me to move beyond the shame and the guilt and to surrender to your healing light. I know that healing can only come once the truth has been revealed, so I ask you to clear my heart, mind, and soul of anything that keeps me trapped in my old ways. I want to dance in the freedom that comes from a life in the light. Help me to remove anything I've held suppressed in my heart and body and bring restoration from the inside out. I surrender to the process without fear or hesitation. I choose to see that the pain of this moment is far outweighed by the joy of truth and honesty. Hold my hand, Jesus, as I remove the cloak of my past and usher me into the dance of truth. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I will leave you with a quote from George Orwell. In a time of deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. I hope this musing has given you a little something to think about too.